Yes, family. What's really good? Welcome back to Infant Investors, the home for all new and non-investors. It's Saturday. I'm still Curtis, according to my passport, and that must mean it's another portfolio update. Listen, I'm going to be talking about the top movers and fallers within my portfolio. I'm going to talk about one dividend payment that I've received. I'm going to talk about free trade 250 and what that basically means is that Free Trade have announced that they're going to be releasing a further 250 US stocks and ETFs to the application, which obviously is a great move. They've announced 10 of them, and I'm going to give you a brief overview on how I feel about some of those 10. I'm also going to talk about managing your money and a bit about the Woodford Fund. Listen, I think it's really, really important that you guys manage your own money. It's the reason why this channel is here to give you the financial education, financial advice, literacy, whatever you want to call it. It's not really advice, to be honest, but just information free free information that's freely out there and exists in the market anyway um, about the stock market so that you guys can manage your money better and I'm going to give you some stories about people that opted to have other people manage their money um, and what the negative impact of that was um, what I'm not going to talk about this week is coronavirus and Brexit listen I am coronavirus out I am Brexit out Brexited out I have to turn that to a verb I am Brexited out and listen, I'm not going to deny or ignore the fact that they are both crucially important factors in the market. However, they're in when uh, the, 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 the. within the case of coronavirus, there have been quite a few videos that I've produced recently. So if you want to know how I'm personally going to trade, what different decisions I'm going to make pertaining to coronavirus, there's a video out there for that. I've talked about how coronavirus affects the stock market, how it affects consumption, production, um, what different industries are most impacted by coronavirus and what to be aware of. There's videos on that. So listen, from a stock market standpoint, I believe there's enough coverage in terms of giving you enough to tool yourself and arm yourself with what strategies you might want to do. Um, so I'm not going to just sit here and report coronavirus week in, week out. In the case of Brexit, it's it's just obvious that this is going to be a topic over the course of the year until we are fully out of the EU. So when there are major updates, then by all means, and when it impacts the stock market, by all means, I'll be putting information out there. But it's not something I really want to talk about on a week by week basis, because then that just means less time to talk about other new interesting stuff that will be relevant to talk about. So yeah, I'm not going to be talking about those two this week. So if you want to know more, like, comment, subscribe, help the channel get to 4k subscribers. Listen, we got to three and a half thousand last week. So thank you to everyone that subscribed to the channel and all of the new subscribers that have hopped on board and joined the journey infant investors is about helping new and non-investors make sense in the market so listen the whole purpose of this channel is that i can educate through demonstrating showing you what i'm personally doing um and giving you information you know about the market so you guys can you know make your own decisions and know what you guys should potentially be doing when it comes to managing your own money if you want to know more if you want, sorry if you are on twitter or instagram at infant investors go and follow me up there um we do a lot of polls questionnaires you know all kinds of interesting stock market information um and obviously you can hit me in the dms if you've got any question and listen the current inflation rate is 1.4 percent. so if you are saving i respect it but at the end of the day you're ultimately losing more money than you're gaining because inflation is rising so the cost of goods and services is rising so the value of your money is effectively decreasing the only way to protect against that is invest in your money and i think the stock market is probably the best way to do that so listen that's why the channel's here and if you are watching this video and you haven't invested into the market the link will be in the description i'm using a free trade application at the moment go and subscribe freetrade.io forward slash infant hyphen invested investors um, and you'll get a free share worth up to 200 pounds once you deposit a pound in um, and start obviously investing as well but let's get into what the top movers are for this week the first one i'm going to talk about is uber 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 has gone up 8.09 percent um, and primarily it's due to their earnings update now i received a very very um you know a very very important question from someone in the dms why if uber is making a loss has their share price risen well we all know that you know the 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 making a loss or making a profit sometimes actually has no impact in terms of share price movement because share price movement is literally just a representation of how people feel about a stock in the market at any given time um however in the case of uber it's worth calling out that they are making a loss uh however their earnings update was that 
they have making a 64 cents loss per share versus the 68 cents loss per share um, that was estimated by analysts. And from a revenue standpoint, they made 4.07 billion in revenue versus the 4.06 billion as expected by analysts. The key thing to note in both of those scenarios is expected by analysts. And that is the variable that causes a stock market price to go up and down for a stock during earnings season. So if a stock market beats, beats analysts' expectations, it typically goes up. Whether that beat is a loss or profit, as long as it beats the expectations, it does better than what analysts expect, we see the stock market go up. We can see it in the inverse direction. You've got the case of AMD who made a profit. However, they didn't beat expectations. So they made less of a profit than what analysts expected. And because of that, they actually the share price actually started to decrease at that time. Um, it's, it's unfortunate. It's, it's just the way the game goes, unfortunately. But at least if you guys know about it, then it's definitely worth um, you, know, you being aware when you know share prices move in certain directions direction the other thing with uber as well is that originally back at towards the tail end of 2019 dara mentioned that dara's the ceo by the way he mentioned that he is going to be profitable uber's going to be profitable by the first quarter of 2021 now he's actually moved that forward to the last quarter of 2020 me personally i wish he didn't do that i'd rather him just allow himself that extra three months buffer but whatever he believes that we're going to be profitable in quarter four 2020 so that guidance that that basic protect, blah, protection projection um, of you know becoming more profitable um, at a sooner pace has obviously excited investors and that's one of the reasons why Uber's share price has has gone up and I've done a video called the top five earnings update rules um, and one of those rules is you know obviously revenue EPS things that you need to look at but also guidance guidance is really crucial if a company starts to say it with their chest that boom 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 we're going to be making money at boom 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 we're going to do this many orders at this, this like that emphasis that courage to come out and say that um, based off what they believe how the business is doing um, generally has a positive impact from a market standpoint the second stock that's done well is micro hard listen micro hard has gone hard again this week 7.87 percent up 13 dollars 13.40 13 dollars and 40 cents up um, and listen micro hard is just going to continue to go hard man they're going to go hard and or, and they're not going to go home they're not going to go home they're just going to continue to go hard i fully believe in this company and listen um they've not done anything this week specifically that has caused this i still think that this is um a, an offshoot of you know their earnings update which was obviously um fantastic and they did really really well there but one thing i will mention something i do want to mention to you for those of you that may be bearish or, or worried about the stock rising too much you can see how the stock's been rising over the course month and the course of the uh, over the course of the last year as well now when you are investing in the market there's two real types of things to look at you've got fundamental analysis and you've got technical analysis now typically for investors for long-term investors like me and why this portfolio is here the main thing to be looking at is fundamental analysis we talk about revenue we talk about customer growth we talk about earnings pe ratios debt assets all of that fundamental stuff i've got a whole series on that if you want to know more about the fundamental fundamental analysis um, that you need to do when you're looking at a company that is pretty much the most important thing however you've got a whole set of people that look at technical analysis these are technical indicators that basically tell you from it from you know looking at averages and looking at you know all these other types of factors whether a stock is going to go up or down now that's more typically used by traders people that day trade swing trade etc however you can look at it for uh, investors, but I personally don't recommend it. I don't think you need to do it. I sometimes do it just because I like to do it and I want to do it, but I wouldn't say it's mandatory. Anyway, there's been an article in CNBC this week recently from an analyst that's been looking at a technical indicator called the RSI, which stands for Relative Strength Index. I'm not going to go into too much detail on it, but I will just give you a high level overview. But effectively, he's been looking at this indicator and this indicator is basically telling him that he expects a 10 to 15 percent fall in micro hards um, share price over the next couple of months. Um, now, how does it how does it work? So the RSI basically is an indicator that's on a scale of zero to 100. Zero 
basically being oversold, 100 being overbought. Now, typically, you know, those are the most extreme levels. So there is typically a threshold and that threshold is usually 20 to 80. Um, sometimes it's 70 to 30. It all depends on the stock that you're looking at, the amount of liquidity um, and a whole bunch of other factor time frame and a whole bunch of other factors. So 20 in this case would be it's an oversold stock, which it would be a signal to buy. And 80 would be means it's overbought stock, which means it's a signal to sell at the moment micro hard is sitting at 86 and so and it's been at the highest level than it's ever been since 1997 which at the end of that period uh, Microsoft share price fell so what he's basically saying is that he thinks the share price is gonna fall me personally it might do it might not do I don't really know if it does do it then I'm just gonna hoard as many more Microsoft shares as I possibly can get my fingers on to be honest because um, I believe in it over the long term and it might just for me be a potential buying opportunity as it be anything else um, worth you know worried about if you look at you know this graph here I'm now on micro hard over the course of you know the year and you can see here for example this was around what September the 27th you can see micro hard or sitting at 100 and listen if you're worried why is he calling it micro hard they go too hard bro they go too hard their earnings is hard their fundamentals is hard their business is hard their business model is hard their cloud is hard everything's hard bro the ceo is hard everything's hard there's nothing soft about them apart from you know software there's nothing soft about them so i call them micro hard and that's it it is what it is and if you don't like it go somewhere else now here you can see on the 19th of September they're at 111. You could then start to see that by December it dropped to like below the 100 mark. If I can kind of get the scrubber there, can't do it. Yeah, yeah, 98.23. So you can see that was about two months later it dropped to about 98.23. Now, obviously, over the course of a year when you're looking at, or this period, when you're looking at this graph, it's like, oh, that's just a minor drop. But during that period of time, people would have been like, oh, my gosh, it's continuing to fall week after week, week after week. This is a two-month period. So you can think, imagine for two solid months, the share price is continuing to fall. That is probably the type of thing that might happen here in this context if it does start to fall but if it did do that again for me personally i will just continue to keep on buying over that two month period um, and then obviously when it starts to you know rise again probably by the next earnings update we might then you know hopefully see it rise again then you know you've got more shares and that's something that that's the way i would potentially play it so i'm always about looking at it for the long term is it a stock for your long term and if it is a stock for your long term investment plans then you know definitely worth holding on to so yeah that's the situation where with micro hard the next one to talk about is apple apple has gone up 5.07 percent they haven't mentioned anything this week again i think this is just off the back of a strong earnings update as well one thing to note as well with apple is that they might be releasing a new apple tv soon someone's gone into their code and actually seen some beta code which looks like a new apple tv os code as well so you know that'll be interesting i think it'll be version 13.4 or something along those lines um so yeah if that comes out then obviously this probably going to be a lot more um, revenue and sales that we can potentially look forward to Apple but there's no major update from Apple standpoint um, and the last one to mention is Virgin Money UK Virgin Money UK has gone up 4.35 percent again it's off the back of a strong earnings we talked about their business lending we talked about their personal lending how lending is an asset for them and that business has grown for them um, and that's probably the reason why but nothing else to mention in that front in terms of top fallers one of them to mention will be Lloyd so Lloyd have announced so Lloyd's have gone down um, well it says 0.65% has gone up for me this week but over you can see over the course of the month it's 7.97% down um, and one thing they mentioned is that they're going to be closing 56 branches that are underutilized listen from my personal standpoint if people aren't going to the branches and people are you know they're underutilized then actually from a business standpoint the cost to serve those those branches and the cost to keep those running and keep the lights on um, is obviously you know going to be you know uh, significant amount so if they can close those branches and actually reinvest that money elsewhere to grow the business then i'm personally going to be a fan of that anyway but obviously those negative type of headlines generally have a negative impact on the market overall um, so that's probably one of the reasons probably many reasons but one of the reasons why it's not been doing so well over the course of the past month the next one to mention is imperial brands now imperial brands has gone down 5.61 percent which is quite significant and it's to do with the fact that they've basically announced that they project um they forecast uh profit warnings due to the whole uk um vaping crackdown blah de blah de blah now we already spoke about that 
before so that's not new news but obviously now they've just basically done this profit warning update um, which has obviously sent the shares price tumbling down imperial brands is something that obviously i always talk about you know it's one of the stocks that you know probably not my best pick but from a dividend standpoint it's done it's done really really well um i've just continued to invest in it i'll continue to average it down at the moment it's not that bad i've been worse than 7.3 percent with this and we will see what happens with imperial brands over the course of the future but one thing i do mention to you guys and i have mentioned before if you haven't heard of pestle analysis p-e-s-t-l-e -E, it's basically a business analysis technique that allows you to look at you know some of the impacting factors to a company now the p is for political e is for environmental s is for social t is for technological l is for legal and e is for environmental and listen there are all of those different types of factors that can be affecting your businesses in this instance the l the legal side is obviously affecting imperial brands and that's something that i pay attention to but in any of your businesses i would always recommend you to try and look at those factors that could be impacting your business sometimes you can have forecast that you know my stock is going to go down and if you know your stock is going to start to drop over the next period then you're not panicking you're not worrying that oh it's gone down 10 percent, it's gone down five percent because you're quite you know abreast of what's going on with you know your current stock at the time now i have received a dividend payment and that dividend payment as you can see here is from vodafone and that dividend payment is for 27 pounds and 11p uh and me personally man I, I i just love receiving dividend payments i was talking to someone in the comments recently who's a psychologist or psychiatrist please forgive me but if you are watching this then you know who i'm talking about and um, they basically said they think there is a chemical reaction in receiving dividends and i think so too i think receiving dividends is awesome dividends is better than sex like Honestly, dividend. Actually, I don't. I don't know the answer to that. I can't compare because I'm a virgin. Anyway, the whole point of the matter is dividends is amazing. Receiving dividends is fun. Is fundamentally just one of the best things. One of the best feelings. Listen, I I remember when I was receiving three pence dividends. Like my first dividend, I think was three p. Like three pence, bro. You can't walk to me on the street and give me three p. I might slap you. Like you can't give me ten p and I'll be happy. But if a dividend comes through, that's three p. I will be happy. And for me personally, it's just the fact that your money is working for you. You haven't done anything else but invest your money into a company. Um, and obviously dividend payments are coming through that you can obviously reinvest in. So listen, I get some comments for some of you guys that are like, oh, you know, I'm only investing £100 and I've only received 2p as a dividend. Me personally, I, my first dividend payment was three pence. Like you guys are looking at my portfolio balance now. For those of you that have been following for the beginning, I started this with a thousand pounds. I started this with a thousand pounds. So, like, I've just kept on investing. I've kept on investing. So yeah, now I might be receiving a twenty-seven pound dividend, but it wasn't always the case with this. And you know, with some other stocks, I received a lot more, and other stocks I receive a lot less. Ultimately, the bottom line is is that you are receiving dividend payments, money that you can then reinvest back into the market, back into your stocks and then benefit from a compounding effect and over the long term if you continue to exhibit those strong disciplined behaviors you know you can easily become a millionaire like i don't really want to start preaching you know financial success and wealth beyond anything that i actually know but you know there's a lot of videos that i've already produced with you know historic data that shows if you you know if you just match the market or if you just do this amount at this interest rate over the course of 30 years 25 years whatever then you will have a retirement of a million or two million or three million or whatever whatever do you know what i mean so ultimately you know start small keep investing what you can and you know it's going to be good for you over the long term but yeah definitely um happy with receiving this dividend payment now that nicely brings me on to the free trade 250 stocks and obviously nothing i can put on the screen for that because those stocks aren't there yet but we received an update on the community that free trade will be launching um, 250 new stocks and ets onto the platform and they've given us <laughs> excuse me that was horrible that was really really bad but it had to come out it had to cut it was better out than in honestly um so listen they will be launching uh, 250 new stocks onto the platform and they gave us a sneak peek of 10 of those stocks Virgin Galactic Reality Reality or Realty Income Corp Costco Neo Tilray Amarin Waste Management Roku Atria Sonos 
Um, and I think that's obviously going to be, you know, great. I did receive a comment from Samir Mohammed. Shout out to you. When am I going to do an updated video on the monthly stocks available? I think at the moment there's still only five. So, you know, there's no point really doing a monthly vid a video on that just because there's not been any new stocks. But in the case of this now, more monthly dividend stocks I expect will be landed on the platform. One to note is Realty Income Corp. That's definitely a monthly dividend stock. And a lot of people in the community have been, you know, looking for that and been asking about that. So I, I see that as being probably probably one of the top performing free trade stocks because um, it's a monthly dividend stock and it's been like probably one of the most highly requested stocks as well and um, one stock that I'm personally looking at you know is Virgin Galactic now when I say looking at it doesn't mean I'm going to buy it it just means I'm going to devote some time to really look at the fundamentals really look at the business and actually see if it's something I want to invest in now but one of the main reasons as well is that I really like their chairman not the CEO the chairman the CEO is some some guy but the chairman is a guy called Chamath Paliapatiya now if you've heard of the name cool if you haven't heard of the name he is the guy that I personally my personal opinion don't shout me I personally attribute Facebook's major success to this guy me personally he joined as the VP of growth and he's fundamentally fundamentally the reason why Facebook grew to the scale um, that it grew and obviously everyone was involved in it but you know there are always some you know um, important people now he sold his shares became a multi-billionaire started his own venture capitalist fund he also bought a fifth of Golden State Warriors basketball team so I think him and like four other people joined forces to basically buy the Golden State Warriors so he owns a fifth of that and he's now the chairman of Virgin Galactic so I believe with him involved um, at a very senior capacity then I think you know the long-term horizon for Virgin Galactic could be could be very very interesting so you know I'm definitely going to devote some time to looking into that it's not a recommendation for any of you guys to look into it or to buy it or whatever but that's just my personal take but yeah when those 250 stocks do land I will review those stocks I'll have a look at it I'll spend some time looking at it I'll definitely do an update on the monthly dividend stocks that are that are available on the platform um, give you my view on some of those stocks and you know take it from there um, but definitely excited to see those new stocks uh, land on the platform now the last thing I'm going to talk to you about is managing your money uh, and the reason why I'm talking about this is that there's been an update from the whole Woodford the Neil Woodford fund situation so for those of you that don't know who Neil Woodford is Neil Woodford was highly regarded as Britain's best stock picker he managed a fund on behalf of Invesco which basically was a Neil Woodford equity fund and a equity income fund and he originally focused on dividend stocks albeit the income word um, inside you know the title of the fund now you know for years and years and years he was doing extremely well and people wanted him to manage their money so in their droves they would basically be giving him their money it got to a stage even where people he had so much people trying to give him their money um, in order to invest that he would say no like if they didn't come with the real bag like if they didn't come with the bag bag he was like nah you, you can't get into this B like people were coming to him with 10 million or 50 million and he was cancelling their meetings he was just like no it's not enough money B 50 mil a light 50 mil I'm Woodford B, like get out of here because like he wanted the like you needed to come to him with real serious money because it got to a stage where like he he was oversubscribed like literally oversubscribed and he was just managing big amounts of money now with all of that fame and success probably got to his head a little bit what he started to do was a lot more riskier investments so he would invest in some really risky really niche biotech corporations it's probably a stretch to even call them corporations probably more startups is probably uh the more accurate terminology but he started to invest in a lot more riskier businesses typically in biotech ones that don't pay dividends ones that aren't listed on the market so they're quite illiquid um, and what some investors started to notice was the diminishing returns so they actually started to sell uh, they were looking at the holdings they were looking at the diminishing returns and they were like mm, i don't really like the strategy he's doing taking their money in out now obviously you've got loads of people that put a lot of big money in so they're taking big money out what that then basically transpired is that or one of the outcomes for that is that he had to suspend the fund he had to suspend the fund he had to freeze the fund frozen stopped frozen and people could not effectively get their money out because he was losing too much of people selling from that standpoint now um 
since that's basically happened, you know, there's been a whole bunch of drama in the news over the course of last year about the fund being suspended. Will people get their money? Won't people get their money? Um, and one of the most recent updates is that people will be getting some money back, which is good. But typically, um, around 45 to 90 percent of their money that they invested, they will lose. So you've got, you know, some people have been announced their share price of 15 pence. Some people share price of 45 pence, 40 pence. It's all based on a number of factors. But this was at a time when, you know, the share price into his fund was 100 pence surplus. So obviously, um, it's really, really disappointing to hear, you know, that situation occur for a lot of people. Um, and it really just reminded me about letting other people manage your money even though you know it could probably seem quite wise because he was so successful but ultimately i personally have a real big issue with people managing my my money i believe i need to know and manage my own money myself and this is what i encourage for you guys to do you know i think about a story when i used to work in the banks so i used to work in a obviously a well-known british bank and um basically i had to book investment uh investment appointments for people so if you basically came to me and i sold you a few different products and then it's like actually i realized that look you got quite a lot of money and maybe you need to actually see a financial advisor then actually i would then refer you to see a financial advisor that can deal with you because you you have a certain amount of a balance etc 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 i remember one time i think i was about three four months into working some guy came in and he was absolutely screaming at me, I want my money, I want my money, I want my money. And listen, I'm seeing esophaguses, I'm seeing tonsils, I'm seeing three day old shepherd's pie in the back of his throat. Like, I'm lit, like, each when you know it's stress, I'm seeing literally four day old meals in the back of his throat as this guy's screaming at me about how his money's been robbed and all of the money he's lost now obviously he did the investment about five years before i even joined the bank do you know what i mean so he did it way before i joined it was just me unfortunately having to deal with him at this time but he lost obviously a lot of money now he obviously went into the bank five years before he saw a financial advisor someone who was 25 years working as a financial advisor very 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 experienced working for probably the best or one of the most recognized british banks you know in britain obviously um and obviously he was losing quite a bit of money quite a bit of money like quite a lot of money he still had money but he was losing a lot of money and he was obviously screaming at me for an hour in terms of he wants his money back this and that this and that this and that and it made me think listen if he got financial advice from one of the best banks from a financial advisor that's been doing it for 25 years and he's losing money and you've got the Woodford situation where people are investing big money and they're losing money it just basically reinforces to me that I believe everyone needs to be accountable for their own money that's my personal value system it's my personal philosophy I don't believe there's any get rich quick schemes and I don't believe you should be deferring your money to other people to manage for you personally speaking there's loads of examples where you know footballers and you know artists and musicians and celebrities and actors that have left people to manage their money and then they've realized they've just gone broke you need to know how to manage your own money you need to know what you're investing in you need to know the mechanics of money how it works if you guys want to get fit I can't train for you. I can't go to the gym for you and make you stronger. You have to put the work in for yourself. And that for me applies to the money situation as well. You need to be managing your own money because you don't want to be in five years, 10 years, something tragic happens to your money and you're sitting there trying to blame this person and that person because ultimately you're going to live through it. You're going to have to deal with it. You're going to be the one on baked beans and spam and you're going to be the one grinding yourself out of the situation. So for me, it's really, really important that you learn how to manage your own money. And that's the whole purpose of this channel. I don't advise what's stocks you guys should pick for anyone that's new to the channel that thinks that this is an advice service it isn't if that's what you're looking for you can leave because i'm not here to advise you to pick this stock or to pick that stock that's not what i'm here to, i don't give a crap what stock you pick i don't care that you pick tesla versus picking uber versus you picking amazon what i actually care about is that you understand the mechanics of the market you understand the terminology of the market that i demystify a lot of the stuff that might seem confusing and actually it's a bit more understandable you understand yourself a bit better your goals your style of investing what approach is more suitable to you just because you've got this person over here that's invested in this growth stock maybe dividend stocks is actually better for you because of your style and the things that you like you understand how to evaluate businesses and what 
things to look out for based off the type of investor you are and therefore you can then advise yourself what stock you should effectively pick. It's basically the whole teach a man to fish rather than give a man a fish philosophy. I'm not gonna tell you to, to just do this. I'd rather tell you, you know, these are the things to look out for and therefore you can start looking out for the right things when you're actually, you know, picking your own stocks because ultimately, you know, I think it's really, really sad when people are left in a situation where they lose so much money, where they lose retirements, where they lose pensions, where they lose their grandkids and their kids inheritance, where they lose a whole bunch of money. And listen, I've got stories for that. I could do a whole series and it would be probably 300 episodes long, each episode a different series about stories in the bank or what's going on with people's money and how much money they've lost or gained or whatever, whatever. So listen, I think it's really, really important that um, you guys learn how to manage your own money. Don't put this off. Don't start thinking someone else is going to do it for you. Don't be half-hearted with this. If you're going to do it, do it properly. And, you know, make sure that you take the time to actually understand some of these factors. And if you don't want to understand some of these factors, cool. Then maybe just invest in ETFs that track indexes. And that's actually going to be a perfect strategy for you. Um, and that's probably the best way for you to approach it if it's something that's not, you know, appealing to you. But if it is something that is appealing to you, then definitely learn about all of these um, different factors. Because otherwise, you're just going to get bumped. And ultimately, you know, that's not really a nice feeling. I remember, have you seen, if you've seen the film, layer cake there's a quote in the film layer cake the art of good business is being a good middleman and that's all these financial advisors are they're just middlemen effectively and really and truly it's all about cutting out the middleman and going straight to the source getting the information for yourself so that you can make the best financial decisions in some instances you might need a middleman listen i'm not a good handyman i can barely change a light bulb like i'll be real with you i can just about change a light bulb like i don't paint i don't do nothing but decorate my house and that's it with furniture and that's about it if i needed an electrician then I will call an electrician and that could be my middleman because I'm not going to learn how to be an electrician to go and do that because I'm only going to need it once or twice a year or a couple of years etc but when it comes to your own money you're going to be managing that on a daily basis daily weekly monthly yearly basis for the rest of your life um, and so it's really really important that listen you know how to manage your money I did a pop quiz on my Instagram this week I talked about you know what is a correction what is a PEG ratio what is the ideal pair ratio I think on the correction, about 80% of you guys got it right um, in terms of what's actually defined as a correction. The, but the PEG and the payout ratio, guys, you guys got that wrong. About 60-70% wrong on both of them. Um, and I've got videos on all of that information. And so for me, it's just it's a further reminder that you know understanding the nitty-gritty stuff, the boring stuff, the stuff that isn't as sexy as Tesla's gone up nine billion trillion percent or whatever you know that stuff is all sex was all sex sexy that stuff is not sex sexy because there's no success in that that stuff isn't sexy you know the whole coronavirus that's not sexy brexit's not sexy none of that stuff is sexy man the only thing that i'm chatting rubbish all of that stuff is the sexy stuff to talk about. The stuff that isn't sexy is what is a payout ratio? What is the percentage of it? What should you be looking out for? You know, what is a debt profile? What you should be looking out for? Those are the stuff that isn't sexy. That stuff is the fundamentals. And that's the stuff that you guys should be looking at. I'll make myself laugh. Listen, I'm going to end the video there because otherwise I'm just going to keep on waffling. The point of the matter is I think that it's really important that you guys look at all of those factors and you guys can make better decisions when it comes to picking, you know, your stocks. Other than that, have a great weekend and I will catch you next time with another investment video. Peace.